Hey there, it's alchemist.camp, where we become better Elixir programmers by building things, and then building more things, and putting things inside of things. This is video number three of building a Phoenix framework front end for StatWatch, which was just a plain OTP app that logs stats on how many YouTube subscribers you have, how many videos you've put up, how many views they've gotten, your Twitter followers, and the Alexa rank of your website. And it just logs those stats day after day after day. If you are interested in building this and have no idea what's going on, check out the playlist under the video and go back to the beginning. If you are following on from the other videos, then we'll continue right now. All right, that part is good. Now the next thing is we need to make it so the users can enter their own information, their own credentials instead of us having to enter it from the command line like I just did for the first user. So let's go to our mix file and we'll do the auth at the same time. Okay, so we have these things for StatWatch. What we need for auth is a plugin called come on in. I'm gonna use a slightly older version of it because the newest version is modularized and would mean we'd have to include uh, sub-dependency and it's just a bit more of a pain. So 2.6 and we'll save that. And now comes uh, something that's, that's pretty horrible, unfortunately. So I'll go to, actually we'll quit the whole IEX section. Okay, so if we run mix depths dot get, so mix depths dot compile and this is where it should fail well it shouldn't fail but it probably will fail because the package doesn't do a very good job of supporting windows okay so unfortunately this package does not do a very good job supporting windows and we'll get this fairly cryptic problem. Make sure you have Elixir OTP version 18.0 or later, which we do. Um, have a C compiler installed, which I do. I have the standard one that comes with Visual Studio C tools called NMake. And uh, then there's nothing really specific about Windows. If we go to the requirements on the GitHub page, again, it's, it's still not super clear. I had to spend some time figuring this out. So what you're going to do is make sure you've got Visual Studio, not Visual Studio code, but the actual Visual Studio installed, and that you have C++ tools. Then you open up the Visual Studio command prompt, or the developer command prompt, which I have right here. If you have the Visual Studio C++ 2015 version, and by the way, it's free, you can download Visual Studio for free, then you download the C++ tools for free. Um, if you have the 2015 version, then you need to go to Program Files. And if you have a Program Files and an x86 directory, go to the x86 directory. Then go to Microsoft Visual Studio, and you'll see a number of directories with numbers after them. So there's 11.0, 12.0, 14.0, Go to the higher version, which should be 14.0 if, if you're on Visual Studio C++ 2015. Then there's a VC directory. Go there. And inside the directory, you'll see a VC vars all dot bat. And let me, let me pump up the, the font size here. Make, oh, I guess I can't on this program. Oh, well. Um, you will type in VC vars all.bat and then pass it amd64 as a flag. This doesn't matter whether if you have an AMD processor or you have an Intel processor, this is the command that you run. Then after that's done, you go to the directory with your project, which is in my case, d colon backslash prog backslash alchemist camp slash or backslash statwatch. And then switch to D colon. Then in this directory, I can run mix depths dot compile like I just tried to do. 
If you were on Visual Studio C++ 2017, then you just open the Visual Studio 2017 developer command prompt. And then in, in this command prompt, the directory structure is a bit different. And in my case, I didn't even have to do the VC vars all of the bat. I just went to my project area and then uh, CD'd into it. Slash alchemist camp slash statwatch. And then mix depths dot compile. So I didn't run it from the 2015 prompt, but I could have either way. It's the same basic deal. You have to run it from here instead of, uh, instead of from Visual Studio Code or from an ordinary command prompt or PowerShell session. And you can see that it has all installed. So we'll close that. You can also close this one iex.bat s mix phoenix.server All right, so now that we have come on in installed, the next thing we want to do is make it so that users can enter credentials themselves instead of uh, doing it manually like we had to do for the first user. So we will look at the new user form as it is. That's just name and username. And we really should have credentials be included in the new user forms. And we've got to have a way to save them to the database and all of that. So let's go to our credential.ex and we'll full screen this. So as you can see, our credentials are pretty simple here. We've just got an email that belongs to a user and that's all we're putting in the database. What we need to add is a password hash And this gets saved in the database. And then we need a password as part of the schema. This is not in the database. So we say virtual true. And then there's also a password confirmation. Which is also virtual. We're going to need to alias come on in dot bcrypt and then the schema so the schema should be saving a password hash and because it's kind of expensive to do that and because you very well might want to change something in your profile that doesn't have anything to do with your password we're going to make two kinds of change sets so this first change set We'll just change the email and it won't do anything with the passwords. Then we'll make another change set that we call a registration change set. And that's for when someone changes their password. And that's going to take a struct and some attributes, which default to an empty object. And the first thing we'll do with this struct is we'll pass it through the normal change set. So that will handle saving the email and other things that might get added later. Then we'll cast the attributes of password and password confirmation and we'll do our validations on them. So we require both of them. And you could have a whole bunch of requirements with the passwords. Uh, we're just going to require uh, length got to be eight and we'll validate that they're the same. And finally, we'll hash the password. Uh, 
and we've got to define hash password. Then we'll write a function for hashing the password. Actually two, we'll make one version for if it's valid and one for if it's not. If it's not valid, we'll just get the change set and we'll pass it along unchanged. And then if it's valid, we'll have a little bit more work to do. We have to get the password out. So password and we'll just call it pass in here. Equals change set. And we'll put change, which just uh, puts a change into the change set. Change set password hash bcrypt dot hash pw salt pass. And that function is the one that encrypts the password. So you can see we're we're getting a struct, then we're running the normal change set val uh, validations and everything on it. Then we're adding the password password confirmation to it, and we're validating that the password and the password confirmation are there, that the password is at least eight characters long, that it's the same as the confirmation, and then finally we're hashing the password. If the password is valid, which we can check because the, the validators add that to our change set. Then we put change on the change set and add a password hash, which bcrypt creates by encrypting our password. And then that whole thing is the change set, this is put change returns the whole change set. And then that's gonna be what gets put in the database. But these two fields are virtual and do not get put into the database. Looking in our credentials migration, we can see that we don't have a password hash as part of that table. So we've got to make another migration to alter that. And we'll just open up another shell and get to the right directory. And we'll run mix dot ecto.gen.migration and let's call this one add pw hash to credentials and here it is we're going to alter table credentials and add password hash. That's going to be a string. And that's all we need. Uh, we are going to have to close this though. And mix ecto.migrate. All right, good deal. Next thing is the form. So we'll go to form and the one for the user. So this form will be included anytime we edit or create a new user. And we're gonna add a form group to it. And this group is going to hold everything that we're doing with uh, credentials. So then we're going to use a helper and it's going to be a little bit custom since we're embedding things from another table. Inputs 4f credential and we'll define our own function to do it. cf is credential form. Label 
cf. Oh, we gotta have equals on all of these. So we've got a label for email. text input and an error tag and I'm just gonna copy some of this decrease the amount of typing required so text input is going to be called email and the class is still form control and then the error tag is email of course then we're going to do the same thing for password. Uh, whoops, there is one other thing here. These should be CF, not F, since this is the credential form. And with that done, we're going to make two more sets. And the first one will be password. Oh shoot, got my join input. Unfortunately, that is not the language I want right now. Okay, English again. Uh, we're gonna make these called password. And then the same deal down here, except these are going to be password confirmation. looks good for the form and now of course we have to have some sort of logic to actually deal with this thing so as you can see it's really basic right now all we've got is a couple of lines for each and uh, we're not doing anything with the credential we'll make that a two-liner all right so in create user we're just getting the user change set and putting it in the repo we're going to add a step to that process, and that step is casting the association of the credential. So ecto.changeset.cast asoc, or association, credential with credential.registration change set, which is to arity, and then insert it in the repo. Then update user is going to be a little bit more complicated than that even, because when we update the user, we don't know if the password was updated or not. If it was, it's going to be registration change set. If it wasn't, it's going to be the normal change set. So we'll make a variable for that cred change set equals if attrs credential password we've got to check this because uh, if they don't put one in there's still something coming in in the attributes it's just going to be an empty string so if it's an empty string then we're going to do credential dot change set slash two. Otherwise, our credential change set is going to be the registration one. Okay, so we have the function that is going to be the change set in cred underscore change set and then once the user change set is done then we'll do ecto dot change set dot cast asoc credential with whatever change set we passed in I'll have a quick look here so if we've got an empty string coming in the password then we'll get the credential change set 
If we don't have an empty string, that means we've got a new password and we've got to go to the registration change set. If the password weren't empty, but the confirmation was empty, then we would just get an error there because they don't match, so that's fine. And if it was empty, then we'll bypass the registration bits and we'll just do this simple change set and then go back and put that in the user. Let's, uh, let's save this and have a check with reality. So user is going to be called Sam. And the username is going to be Sam I am. And email is going to be alchemist.camp plus Sam at gmail.com. Password is going to be ASDF, ASDF. After the previous video, some people pointed out that a password should never be shown. I personally don't like this when I'm signing up because typos suck and if you have your fingers over one row you can easily get both the the confirmation and the password itself off but you know it is a best practice so we will follow that let's go back to our form these are text inputs here so we'll just change this to password input save that and now type in a password ASDF, ASDF, and it's completely hidden. All right, submit that. And credential registration change set is undefined. Credential is not available. Well, that makes sense. Sawatch accounts user. And we also need to alias the credential. Save that. Try resubmitting the exact same form. Something went wrong. Maybe didn't get the password. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Submit. And we still have an error. It doesn't say what the error was. Let's let's look in the terminal. That's very strange. I don't see any sort of error at all. We only have one user, so the other one did not get inserted. And, oh, oh my gosh, confirmation instead of mation. I bet that mistake is in the form. Every, yeah, okay. That would do it. <clears throat> confirmation. Go back here, resubmit everything. Can't be blank. Oh, okay. I guess it didn't actually resubmit everything. All right, we got a new user. Typos could not even begin to prevent us from making progress. Now, uh, let's look at edit. Make sure it's not crazy. So if we change something that is not a password it should be one change set okay that was fine and if we edit something that is the password so say we restore the email to its previous value and we make the password more secure a1 s2 d3 f4 a1 s2 d3 f4 Okay, let's have a look at our general plan. So view of the stats is done. We have sessions, we have an auth controller, we have auth and ha password hashing, 
There's more we can do on that. I've made myself an admin. So we've got to build a little bit more into the auth controller, limit the visibility of profiles and users, and make some kind of styling and associate the profiles with the users. All right, we are close. This is almost done. On to the auth. So let's make another version of login and logout just to be used inside the auth controller because it'll simplify things a bit. Uh, just call it login and con takes a user and we will put current user into the session user and put session user id and user dot id and configure the session to renew configure session renew true then log out is much simpler. No, it's not logic. You gotta gotta be careful about these typos. So log in and then come on, expand. There we go. Then log out. And that's just gonna take the con and configure session con drop true okay so we can use these functions from inside the auth controller and then we're going to make a function to restrict any given action to someone who's already logged in we'll have two versions of a function called logged in user and the first version is if they are logged in We can tell that by doing a pattern matching on the con. Make sure that it has an assigns and that in that assigns is a current user, which is an object. And let's see, one, two, all right. And Whatever the options are, we will ignore them, and then we will just pass the con along. So everything will continue unaltered. Then in the case that they aren't logged in, we will we will put up a flash. Error, you must be logged in to access that page. Redirect to helpers.page path con and index. Okay, so this will take them to the index page and tell them they have to be logged in to go wherever they were trying to go. Let's make sure we've got the helpers in here. We do have access to the helpers. Okay, so this logged in user function can be used on pretty much any action we want in any controller. Um, to make sure that any controller has access to it though, we need to go into our web file. So statwatchweb.ex. And as you can see from the description, the definitions will be executed for every view or controller or whatever. Obviously, we want to be judicious about using this. So we're just going to add import statwatch.auth only logged in user two and we'll also end up making uh, one for admin so authenticate admin also two so now every controller in our app 
we'll have access to these two functions and I'd better make an authenticate admin, at least a dummy version of it so that uh, we don't get an error. Authenticate admin con and opt. And for now, it's just gonna pass the con along. All right, and there is one other loose end related to logging in, and that would be our authenticate login function, which I believe is in the contacts that would be in accounts. So here we go. Yeah, right now, every attempt to log in succeeds. And that's, uh, you know, it's great that we're hashing the passwords and and doing all of that right, but if every login attempt succeeds, it doesn't really matter. What we're gonna do is add some requirements here. So as we set it up just a little while ago, someone tries to log in with an email and a password, and then we get the credential out of the repo and preload the user onto the credential. And if we can't get that email address, if, if it just no one has that email address, then we return error not found. What we're gonna do for the happy path is in addition to checking that the email address exists in some credential, we're also going to check the password against it. So we'll use a function called check PW, which comes from bcrypt, and we'll check given pass against the credential password hash. So this will basically hash the password that we give it and then check it against the stored hashed password in the database. If that happens, then the person should be logged in. If that doesn't work, but we do have a credential, then we'll have an error for unauthorized. Then we're gonna to have to import that from bcrypt import come on in dot bcrypt only check password to and dummy check password which has no arguments and speaking of that, we should be using the dummy check password. Dummy check password will just use some time. That way it's not possible to execute a timing attack. So uh, if the user doesn't exist and we choose not to display the not found error on the front end, we should have a dummy check password here, which will use an equivalent amount of time as if there actually were a password being hashed and then compared against the database. So that should do it. Now we have a working authenticate by email password and in our auth controller, we have this logged in user plug that we can put into our actions. So let's give that a try. We'll go to our user controller and we'll make it so that you have to be logged in to see certain things. So it would make sense if you have to be logged in to see uh, the details. Like obviously you can't make someone be logged in to create a new user. No one will be logged in then. And you shouldn't need to be logged in. Actually, maybe that's the only situation. So we'll say, plug logged in user when not action in new or create. So if a user is not logged in, they cannot go to anything except new or create. They can't, uh, they can't do show, they can't edit, they can't update. Obviously this might depend on your app, like maybe you do want people to be able to see the, the user profiles, 
when they're not logged in, but we'll make it so they can't. So show user, that's all good. User number two. Now we'll log out. And we'll go back to user number two. And you must be logged in to access that page. And notice the redirect. And we'll try going to user one, or users one, I should say. And must be logged in. We just get kicked back here. But if we log in, Sam I am, ASDF, ASDF. Sam I am's email was alchemist dot camp plus sam at gmail.com and the password is asdf asdf originally but it's not anymore alchemist dot camp plus sam at gmail.com a1 s2 d3 f4 and now we're logged in and now we can also look at the user pages we can look at all of them, not just our own. Once again, this could be something we want. It could be something we don't want, but let's assume that's something we don't want. Let's say we just want users to be able to see their own accounts. Well, what we'll do is we'll make a correct user plug. And unfortunately, we can't really put this into the auth controller, and that's because we need to know the user, uh, and we're only gonna have that information in the user controller or at least we're not necessarily going to have it in every controller. I'm going to make a private function called correct user. And it's going to take the con, of course. We're going to look in the assigns and we're going to match for current user and store that in a variable we'll just call current. And we're going to match admin user and store that in a variable called admin. And as well as the assigns, we're going to get the params and match the ID out like we usually do. Then we need to keep track of all of this as the con and we're not going to do anything with the params okay so this is this is a quite a pattern match here but basically the user that is in the session so the the user who is logged in is going to be current and the id is going to be the user of the page we're looking at because that's what matched in the route so if String dot two integer because keep in mind everything coming in here is in a string of the ID is the current user and current is the entire user since we put all of that into the assigned so we're going to do current dot ID or admin uh, we don't need to check anything on that it's boolean right now later if it's not boolean this should still work. So basically, if, if we are the same user whose page we're looking at, or if we're an admin, then we'll continue on with the con as normal. Otherwise, we'll restrict access. Put flash. Let me scroll up a bit so it's easier to see. Put flash error. You don't have access to that page redirect to user path con show current and we'll halt So there will always be a current user in the assigns, but if nobody's logged in, that would be nil. And we don't want to redirect a nil. So 
we will also set up a redirect path, the top. If current user is going to be exactly this. Otherwise, it's going to be the very root path. For now, we're just going to make it really simple. We'll plug correct user when action in edit update and delete. And also we'll, we'll, we'll put show in there. All right, so we go back here. Uh, we are logged in as Sam I am, and we are looking at Ben's profile. Don't have access, and it sent us back to our own. All right, so that is, uh, that's kind of a cool function, and it's, uh, it's one that I use a lot in various apps that I make. But what if we want it to be a little more complicated? Like what if you want users to be able to see each other, but you just show less information if they're not looking at their own profile? Uh, to do that, it's we're gonna have to get rid of this part so that the plug doesn't stop the view from happening, but we'll have to change what's in the template itself. So show user, that's the second one there. Okay, so we've got a few things to do here. Uh, first of all, let's get rid of that default thing there. Now we're going to do something a little bit unusual. We're going to put some code in to the top of this template that doesn't display anything, but it will figure out if the user who's currently looking at it is whether if the current user is the same as the user ID. So current user, this is going to be a little bit complicated. So current user is just a guard here. If nobody's logged in, we don't want to be checking the properties of, of some variable that's undefined. So current user and current user dot ID. So this part will evaluate to false if no one's logged in. It'll just nil, it'll be false. So this and won't get executed. If someone is logged in, the value of this is going to be the current user's ID. We're going to check if that is equal to user.id. And there has to be a user ID because there is a user for which uh, this template is being shown because otherwise the route wouldn't, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't even get here from the controller. And this should be a boolean so we'll say not not everything inside those parentheses this is always going to be true or false now all right so that should be enough to get started we'll start off by making an h1 and actually let's add in a little bit more space in the top just just because make an h1 and we'll show the username so user dot username Then after that, we're going to skip a line and strong name uh, we'll basically do the same thing for email. show each of the user's profiles.
that logic is going to be kind of involved, so we'll come back to that. And if the user is themselves, or if, if they're looking at their own page, we'll make it possible for them to create a new profile right from here. If the current person looking at this page is the, an admin, or the owner of that profile, then I shouldn't say profile. That's going to get a little confusing. If they're looking, if the user is looking at their own data, or if it's an admin looking at it, then we'll add in a block here to create a new profile, and we'll make a button to do it. Um, button. This is just a, a helper in Phoenix, so that'll create an HTML button. Create profile. And when clicked, that's going to go to the profile path, pass in con, and new. And then since we don't actually want this button to be posting anything, we've got to add in method, get, see how that looks actually. All right, what is wrong here? Email is not found in statwatchaccounts.user. That's because it's in credential. And we do preload those. Okay, that sort of works. Uh, let's, uh, let's style that button a bit though. Okay, before the stuff at the bottom, I'm actually gonna add in a horizontal rule. better and we need a little bit more space above the create profile oh we need space above the button as well profiles so line break there okay and the profiles are being listed sam i am doesn't have any profiles let's add a class to this button class is button button primary and we need some margin at the top and I'm just going to throw it right in here style is margin top 1 em okay good enough so we'll make a profile and this one will just be uh, Sam's main. No YouTube. Maybe there is a Sam I am Twitter account. Wouldn't surprise me. I'll just submit that. Um, maybe not. Oh, actually, you know what? We don't have any data here. And we should get data when we make a new profile. And we can call statwatch.fetchstats from, let's see here, from the create. Once a profile is created, we'll just immediately get stats for it. Okay, and there are a few other things we're going to change too. Right now, the profile isn't saving who created it. So the profile is not associated with the user, which I believe was one of the key items on our list, associate profiles with users. So let's definitely do that. And then we're also going to have to limit the visibility, uh, or at least limit some of the actions on the profile. Because as it is, anyone is still allowed to just go in and delete other people's profiles. And that's, that's no good. So let's let's test the fetch stats part first. We'll make another new profile. Uh, this one will I'll actually just beat my blog, which I think is already on someone else's, but that's okay. And fetch stats save is undefined or private. Fetch stats and save, yeah. That's what I meant. Fetch stats 
and save. Uh, the profile was already created, so we can't do that. Well, you know what? We can just delete it. And then we'll go back and we'll do it again. So it's a little slow, and that's good. That means it's probably fetching the stats. So there we go. We got the Twitter followers, got the Alexa rank right away. That's definitely an improvement. Now, the next question is what to do about permissions. And we're definitely going to use that plug we just made. Logged in user. And let's see. We want users to be able to see each other's profiles. So unlike the user pages, we're going to let anyone see. But they can't edit or delete, obviously, when they're not logged in. So one not action in new create or show. And we'll also not let people who aren't logged in look at the index. Correct user. And this plug it doesn't exist yet because correct user exists in user. It's going to be similar here though. So they have to be the correct user to edit or update or delete. No updating other users' profiles. Uh, now we're just going to do a copy paste. It's not exactly the same, but this is going to be similar. So correct user. So there are going to be a few things different now. The biggest is this comparison. Since we're not in the user controller, the ID we're getting in is a profile's ID, not the user's ID. So we're going to have to load up a whole profile schema. Let's say profile equals core.getProfile of the ID. And then if it's not their own they're trying to edit, we'll just send them back to, to the index actually. Profile, path, con, and index. Then we'll change this part to if the profile dot user ID is equal to current ID, the redirect path. redirect path is always reasonable. Okay, reload the page so that the links reload and I'll try to edit somebody else's profile. You don't have access to that. Excellent. I'll try to delete somebody else's profile. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You don't have access. Okay, uh, the other thing that would be kind of neat to do is let's just show the profiles that belong to the current user. Okay, so our index is very straightforward, and we can see what happens with list profiles from IEX, alias statwatch.core, core.list profiles, and we get them all. It would also be really nice if we could just list the profiles that belong to one user. So let's open up core and see how that would work. So we have list profiles. Now we'll just make another one that takes uh, takes one argument. And that'll be a user. And it will do repo.all where profile user ID is the same as user ID. This caret is here because uh, we, we don't want to match a new user. We want to force it to be 
the user that was passed in up here. Um, okay, that should actually be all it takes. So uh, actually that's not gonna be worth checking and that's because none of the profiles have users in them. So I am going to trust that this very simple logic that I've used many times before is correct. And we will use it after the profiles are in place. So in this index, we're going to look at the signs and the con as is fairly normal. And we'll get the current user out. And keep track of that whole con as before. And then instead of core.list profiles, we'll use the new one that we made where we list the profiles for one user. This is never going to match right now because right now this is going to match all the time and that's okay. We don't want to use this one yet. We want to set up all the profiles with the correct users and then we'll, we'll use that. So in this create function, we still need to get the profile params out of the, the params but we also need to match the con and get the current user out of the assign. So that logic is basically identical to this. And we have a very long line, so I'm gonna use the next one. So we will set a new variable called params equal to map.put of the profile params And user ID, so in the key user ID, we will store current.id. So it's a currently logged in user. So now, whenever a user creates a profile, uh, it automatically belongs to them. Then we want to do almost the same thing in our update. but not quite the same actually. Um, the one difference is that in the update, we're not necessarily gonna put in the current, users, uh, the current user's ID because maybe an admin user would update someone else's profile. And in the process of doing that, the profile would become that admin's profile. We don't want that. So we're going to use uh, map.putnew. Put new will prevent anything like that from happening. So our params will equal map.putNew, which will not overwrite an existing key. It'll just add a key if it's not there yet. And same thing, user ID is the key, and the value is current.id. So now when someone updates a profile, if nobody owns a profile, they will own the profile. If someone does already own it, the ownership won't be changed. Okay. We'll change that to current. And we probably have the same thing down there. Yep. Sam's main profile currently does not belong to anybody. We'll edit it. Not allowed to edit it because it belongs to nil and Sam is not nil. Well, let's remove that rule for a moment. So just for the, the purpose of updating these, we'll get rid of this correct user requirement. Now Sam can edit it and I'll save it. And now it should belong to Sam. And there's no really easy way to check that yet. So I'm just gonna do the same with uh, Sam's other profile. And Sam will create a new profile as well. Sam's new profile. And it doesn't even have any, any data to check at all. Oh, no function clause matching an integer dot count digits. That's because it's nil. 
Well, that's not too hard to change. Right, we need to make sure that this is binary, so we will define force int of x, just x, when is integer x, then we'll just do x. So this force int is the thing that's turning all of the bad data into negative ones, just so that we, we can put it in the database without getting an error we're going to have it handle more things. So before it was only handling strings and they would all turn into negative one if they, if they couldn't be parsed. But now we're gonna make it so that if it's an integer, we do X. If it's binary, which is a string, by the way, the strings are called binaries in Elixir. We'll parse it as we were before. I guess you, you should probably all know that what binaries are if you've been watching this uh, this YouTube channel very long. Um, def force int of anything else will be negative one, which is our, our error code essentially. So now between the three of these function adds, we have uh, a lot better error handling. We go back. It's already been taken. Okay, uh, let's edit that new one. Okay, all of these should belong to Sam now. And we can check that from here. Alias stat watcher accounts and user equals accounts dot get user number two of user number two, which is Sam. Accounts.listProfiles is undefined or private. It's core, it's not accounts, right? Nil, 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 nil. Well, shoot, that's uh, that's not working then. So create puts the profile params, user ID, current ID. Edit, so update, gets the current user, and it puts the user's ID into the profile params. Oh, that's because we're not using params. We're still using profile params. That's a pretty silly oversight, like most of them seem to be. And now I bet we have some. There we go. Sam's new profile. Okay, Sam is just gonna claim all of his own stuff. And actually has to make one more profile as well. Otherwise, it's not really gonna be a new profile. And we better make a new new profile so that we can test the new path. And obviously in a more serious app, uh, I would have written tests for all these things. Just to point that out, some some listeners have asked if I ever use TDD. Uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, and I very frequently will write tests for everything on the back end, especially. But uh, in in a situation like this, when it's very simple, I think uh, spending time on tests can get in the way of understanding what's going on. So I usually like to write tests after I know what's going on. And okay, stats for a new new profile. And is new new profile in Sam's list? Yes, it is. 
So now that that's done, we can limit the profiles being viewed to those that belong to the current user. And the way that I'll do that is I'm just going to make this global listing happen for admins and nobody else. We don't need current user, we just need admin user. And we'll do that. And then finally, if nobody is logged in, current user will be nil and we'll try to list profiles for nil, which is gonna cause a problem. So profiles equal if user is going to be that. And if there is no user, then it's just going to be an empty list. All right, let's give that a shot. And we'll go to all profiles. And we only see Sam's profiles. And if we were to log out and try to go back to that page, must be logged in to access it. Uh, okay, let's get rid of that rule just so we can see what I was trying to demonstrate. So we're logged out and we see no profiles at all. Strangely, there is still a new profile option uh, that's that's because the page logic doesn't take that into account. Um, we're actually not even going to let people see that though. So we will uncomment this and this. That's what we wanted for restricting who can see the profiles. Um, there is another thing though, and that is, I, I think for profiles especially, it's nicer to have the name of the profile instead of uh, just profile one. So let me log back in really quickly. Uh, and that's to be expected because the, uh, the original user didn't have a password at all. So we've got nil instead of strings. So I think what we'll do is we'll make Sam the admin. So that is in the auth controller, I believe. It was just hard coded in an admin email address. Change that. So now Sam is the admin, and and Sam can actually go into other people's profiles and then give them a password and save them. And instead of going here again and again and again to type in the login logout, let's put that into the layout. So if there's a current user, we want to give an option to log out. So we'll add, so first we're going to add a divider. And then we'll make a link to log out. And that will go to logout. And maybe this is something that'll change in the future. Like maybe it's not always going to be uh, logout. So we'll use the paths. Session path con and delete. But if there is no current user, then we'll add a link to, actually there's no reason this can't all be in one line, so I'm gonna do that. So 
the link will be logged in and the session will be new. Or wait, no, it will be create, I believe. No, it's gonna be new. So we gotta render the page. Okay. That should be a, a fair improvement. So now we have Sam I am up here, log out, get started. We don't need get started. And yeah, we'll get rid of that. And if they're not logged in, sign up. Okay, so Sam I am is here. Sam I am logs out. Now we can log in or sign up. We'll log in as the primary user that now has a password. And Ben Armstrong is here and has no profiles right now. So profiles one, all profiles and we see none. Is this not the admin? Ah, should be a signs. Okay, and now you can see all the profiles because he is the admin and he can also delete other people's profiles. Sam has way too many. Get rid of the new ones. And we'll get rid of that one. Okay, so that's good. The next thing though is it's a little bit weird, in my opinion, to go to a profile and have it just be at the number one. Most people aren't gonna wanna remember the ID of their profile, but they will probably remember the profile's name. So let's change it so that all the profile routes use the profile's name as their slug instead of the ID. But let's break that up into another video. I hadn't expected to have quite so many clips of debugging in this video, but I think it's useful to see those error messages and get a feel for what can be causing them, which is why I left them in, and why we're already past an hour. So the next video will handle making profile URLs based on name instead of by ID, and it will also build out some more uh, some more logic into the pages for displaying different things depending on what each person's allowed to see and styling a site and uh, it should be shorter than this one it should be the last one but no promises after these last two videos and as always if you found this educational or interesting click subscribe click the bell on youtube and go to alchemist.camp where you'll soon be able to log in for more resources about learning Elixir. Till next time, code on.